hello and welcome back and that's right today we got to talk about these guys because frankly there has been a little storm of brewing in this particular teacup for the better part of half a year and this has been a slow rolling thin that really came to a head at the start of 2023 it is about the reliability and the apparent slow death of a number of Samsung SSDs. But before we go any further, it's worth highlighting a few things. Most of the information for this story, and again, any references I use, I will link to them in the description or put the references there on screen, but it comes from multiple sources. And one of the biggest problems with discussing this subject at the moment is the majority of the details are very wavy and in the air not just the model ids that are being discussed here but samsung themselves and their response to a lot of these things is a little bit on the gray area side and i do think this may be one of those subjects that a follow-up video is going to happen in like six months that properly clarifies the whole thing but let's get straight into it over the last few months we've seen online on multiple different platforms lots of users with samsung S ssds reporting kind of out of nowhere failures on their drives just out the blue running when they're using crystal disk or just general smart testing there now these drives have predominantly although different drives have been thrown around but it is getting complex and i'll get to why in a second but the ones that have bubbled to the surface the most are the samsung 980 pro and the samsung 870 and 970 evo in the case of the pro the 2tb and in the case of the evo it's a little less clear but the 4tb has been mentioned several times now this first started appearing over on numerous Chinese websites and indeed this goes back as far as August September 2022 it even made it onto Chinese mainstream media as a concern but has since been removed make of that what you will now this error was acknowledged as one during smart testing in a 0e or 03 value that is a media error now again if you use Samsung's own magician software where you can scan drive check is anything wrong with it the similar users were using those same software from Samsung there and it was acknowledging the same error of an increasing value of a noted error within Crystal Disk. Now, fast forward to very recently and uh, Puget Systems, kind of like the number one uh, US uh, PC builders, you know, whether for workstations and more, um, they started getting continued reports or increasing reports from their end user base of this same issue. Now, when they looked into it personally, they contacted Samsung, and it sounds like Samsung didn't respond immediately, but then very quickly jumped on the bandwagon. Because with their own research, it came to the uh, drives that were running the firmware, get ready for this, 3B2QGXA7, and if you expected me to remember that for this recording, you're having some kind of bubble, but that uh, Samsung 980 Pro 2TB drives that were running that firmware seem to be the ones that were having this error, this um, smart test error of 0E and 03 value there. Now, Samsung very quickly jumped on this and rolled out a firmware update in conjunction with uh, Puget Systems uh, findings there. And that um, uh, firmware update is available now in the Samsung Magician software for the PC. So. This update, and again, then it doesn't just affect that. This similar uh, um, firmware uh, uh, revision, and again, hopefully on screen, it will have detailed more on the reference point, and again, it will be linked in the description, which does seem to be outside of just this drive. But the problem at the moment is that there isn't really much in the way of official response from Samsung on this. Now, again, if people are being affected by this, it comes under standard warranty. So if your drive is reporting errors like this within its workload lifespan and five-year uh, warranty, then again, much like any warranty, sending it there and getting it back. But it's the following consequences. One, if this happens, your drive goes into a read-only state, which again, if it's an OS drive or a priority drive, is going to be hugely problematic, even when there's background dynamic data generation. The next thing that really blurs and complicates this, and this is something, something where you can understand why it may have been difficult to pinpoint this up until now, and that is because of Chia. Anyone remember the cryptocurrency Chia? Uh, that's storage optimized rather than G, uh, GPU optimized crypto there. Well, the m number of SSDs that were f uh, basically bought up in the market, really affecting availability of drives, um, where, where people were bunging them in trying to get this new crypto coin, 
they burnt through SSDs like wildfire. And these SSDs burnt up very quickly and then were resold secondhand uh, very quickly with most users when selling them secondhand online stating, yep, these drives, it's only been used for a year, year and a half, it's got plenty of warranty left on it, you're laughing. So at the moment where there's this whole confliction between drives that have been purchased either from registered first party uh, uh, partners for their drives and second hand drives that have been purchased knowingly or unknowingly having these health errors and the complications of cheer on SSD markets has affected this uh, 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 drives health span for people now that are just not aware that the drives they've got may have been repurposed, repackaged by some slightly unhanded third party there. That's why it's a very muddled subject to get your teeth into right now. But I'm sure a number of you have come to this video because you're running a drive like this or some of those Evos in your host system. And if you are running these in your host system, are you going to be complicated by this? Are you running these in a PS5? The 980 Pro was installed in a lot of PS5s. How do you update your firmware? How do you check? And before we make our way over to my PC where I will walk you through the checks process and then the update and firmware process, it's worth highlighting straight off the bat that if you don't have a PC with an available M2 NVMe slot that allows you to install one of these inside, you're not going to be able to update the firmware. A number of you might be wondering, can you use an external dock like this one here from Marico that I'm reviewing on the channel soon? No, you can't use an external docking station. The same goes for if you're going to think about utilizing an external um, USB dock, a uh, USB case for your M2 NVMe. These connect via USB. You can't update firmware without going directly into PCIe connection via the BIOS there on the motherboard, the MOBO there. You can't even use a standard, even higher end Thunderbolt one. That still doesn't work. So if you don't have access to a PC where you can connect this drive directly into the M2 NVMe slot, you can't update that firmware. But other details that have emerged from this, because remember, everything I've spoke about right now is largely kind of conjecture from multiple sources. And until Samsung give an official statement on this, a lot of this still has to be treated as TBC. But when you are using this drive, if you're running a drive where its manufacture point is after, I'd say midway through 2021, based on all of the correlated reports we've seen, you should be fine. It's drives that were manufactured before uh, February, uh, sorry, uh, mid-year, so call it July, August 2021. And again, it's still a dancing waypoint there. There's still no precise de uh, date that everyone's kind of aggregated towards. If it's before that date, check your firmware and make sure you're not running 3B2QGXA7. Um, and even if you aren't, try to make your way towards updating your firmware. Most up, uh, updated firmware for SSDs will not blank the drive. Always have a backup in place, make sure of that. But nevertheless, updating firmware on SSD these days has been designed to not flash the NAND, not format the drive. But do bear in mind that some PCs, when you introduce that SSD into the M2 slot, might invite you to format the drive. You don't have to do that. The Samsung Magician will allow you to see the drive without mounting it. So don't initialize or format that drive if you connect it. But for now, let's make our way over to my test machine and just walk you through how to check the health of your drive and how to update the firmware on your Samsung drive. Okay, so once you've made your way onto the desktop of your computer, it's worth highlighting I am using a Windows machine here. I'm slightly caught in the corner here between some hardware, so I apologize if my voice is ever so slightly tunneled while I'm talking to you. So what you need to do is the two tools you're gonna to need more than anything here are going to be Crystal Disk and the Samsung Magician software there. Now to get hold of these, head over to the links, hopefully linked in the description. You're gonna to need to get hold of Crystal Disk Mark. Again, it's a very straightforward tool to go for there, Crystal Disk in even crystal disk mark is the benchmark testing tool we've used in other videos and you're going to need to get hold of that again it's very straightforward to download all of the download options are there you can just quickly download crystal disk info from there opens up nice and easy you just need the .exe and it will download locally to your pc the next thing you're going to need is samsung's magician software so they've got this long sprawling page here which is all lovely and pretty but really just click that button at the top right that will take you to their download section there and you just need to download the installer there nice and easy and it's the magician go ahead download it nice and simple boom done there's lots of other tools there but really 
that's the one you're going to be needing to go for the magician software for consumer ssds i should say this one here go to that and download it again you won't need the guide it's a simple exe to install so let's look at that first tool crystal disk info i've got the samsung ssd installed here now the values as mentioned earlier on that one is the one that we really care about the most there there are others but mainly those two now those on this drive are running absolutely fine you can see the health and everything and again you can go into a little bit more detail digging in if you choose you can run individual tests but really from this point that is when you want to go into the magician tool when you boot the magician tool it will analyze other ssds you may have connected to the system you can see i've got other drives but of course you can't really represent uh, it doesn't give you too much information on non uh, samsung drives there if you already have the tool installed on your system make sure to see if a new firmware update is available for your software but mainly if there is a firmware update available for your ssd an option will appear down here but before you do that let me show you how to check some bits and bobs on your drive so smart tests are periodically run by the drive itself and as you can see that is the testing there of this drive now i know a lot of this is very hard to take on board but the one you're looking for is multimedia errors this is the one of the highest concern for you this is the one where you don't want this number going absolutely crazy town bananas as you can see it indicates the number of errors uh, on the control detecting unrecoverable data integrity errors these are basically bad blocks or dead zones on the disk you can export that report if you want for future reference um, but then you can sort of dig down find out more about it now if you want to double check your drive's health again make sure you've uh, had your data backed up because the first thing you can do is run a performance benchmark i've already performed one there and the performance benchmark just does a quick scan of the disk of its up and uh, or its read and write now don't worry about my numbers there being at 3000 it's only because on this pc that i'm using the only slot i had available was a pcie gen 3 times 4 slot not a 4 times 4 that's why that performance is only at the 3000 so mark if i was using a 4 times 4 slot then you would have seen that performance number higher so if you're worried about your drive performance then run the benchmark there however the thing that we care a lot about is the diagnostic scan because the diagnostic scan i've done a short scan but you can do a longer scan that will take longer as you can see 40 minutes per terabyte or a short scan again i only did for this video nice and quick it will give you a, effectively these blocks represent the disk and as you can see they're absolutely fine now had we had a bad drive here then we would have seen something like this we would have started seeing small bad blocks here and this again comes from a 2tb drive value but again this was a drive that was affected by uh, overactive chia use there so whether it's the drive died because of overactive chia or it was one of those drives that was potentially having a problem we'll never know and this is what i mean about that issue regarding some of these drives where chia lives and where failure uh, committing to that firmware has happened so again that is what you're seeing on a bad drive there additionally if you go back i'll link to this article here at tech going where we see more information about users that were affected by it. and there's more coverage of uh users in china that were reporting this for the first time and as you can see if we scroll right in there this is where we can see that first id error starting to register there and its impact there on significant uh block scans there overall so when you're ready for your drive to be updated in firmware, and luckily, as this is quite an old 250 drive that was an OS drive that I kept in a drawer for a while, if you do want to update your firmware, it will let you know down the bottom here that a firmware update is available. So again, click that update tab, and I'll let you know if there's a newer version of the Magician software, which there is. But what I'm interested in is that new firmware update to get me from that 1B2 firmware up to the 5B2 firmware. So again, I'm recording this on OBS, making sure, so I only get to do this once. And I'm going to go ahead and update that firmware. It will check the compatibility. And then you can see it will need to shut down this computer and reboot. This is what I mean about the system requiring you to... Um, connect the ssd to the primary motherboard via the pcie there via the mobo and the bios you can't do this if you're going to try use an external drive because that works on top of your operating system on top of a hypervisor so you're not going to be able to use that now of course as soon as i click ok what's going to happen is 
it's going to cut off OBS for us there for the recording. So I'm going to wrap things up now. But just on your side, you just need to click OK and it will take you back onto Samsung Magician. Actually, what I'll do is I'll run this update and bring you back to the updated firmware on this drive. So let's fast forward to the update of this firmware. OK, the system has rebooted and as you can see there, that new firmware has been applied. Upon rebooting the machine, Samsung Magician has immediately reopened and as you can see, there is the new firmware installed on that drive. And again, you can make your way back and again, you can find out more information. You can run a fresh diagnostic scan in case you're wondering, but that won't make a huge difference. And also, any data on the drive will not have been impacted as this is a light impact firmware update there, so it's absolutely fine. But for now, let's make our way back into the studio there and summarize today's video and there you go that's really everything we know right now as i mentioned earlier on details on this are still spread all over the place the most cohesive information so far has come from puget systems they're the ones that have conducted internal checks they're the ones that have communicated with samsung and this firmware seemingly has happened because of them so full kudos to them however we still don't have a full detailed list of SSDs that may or may not be affected by this. And we still don't have full details from Samsung about the extent of this. Is this just a slightly off firmware update? Is this an AND issue? And with Samsung stating that this new firmware update will completely resolve this, does that mean it was a right error to start with that was built into the firmware inconsistently? But we've got no details and nothing in this video is confirmed so we have to be tbc to be confirmed and unconfirmed about all of these details maybe later in the year when we can look at this with a sense of perspective and we have the full story we'll do a follow-up to this video but for now hopefully there will be a link in the description to not only obviously all of the resources we've talked about today but also a link to the nascan article to guide you through the best ways to update your firmware on your samsung drive so stay tuned for that but otherwise thank you so much for watching i hope no one has had their drive lost to them get your backups in order and have yourselves a great week